This is another episode of Flavor in Your Ear Podcast. A, brand new flavor in your ear. a podcast about damn near any and every topic with no filter and zero regard for the easily offended. Everything you say upsets somebody. Please welcome the man behind the madness. The most important person with all due respect. Let's go! Your host and audio flavor maestro. My man. Marquise Edwards. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening out there in the world, wherever you are. We are back with another episode of Flavor in Your Ear podcast. And as always, I always get inspirational, great, original guests for the show to share their stories and experiences here, raw, unfiltered, unscripted to our audience. And today I have a special guest today, Coach Lee Hopkins is with, here with me and basically going to talk about his journey and what he's bringing to the world today because everybody has a story and what moves them to do what they're doing today? Because I feel like podcasting is something that, um, as I, we were speaking in our room session, something that's kind of like political free, especially on this show. You know, we can just uh, express whatever it is that you went through. Your story is heard and it can maybe inspire someone else who's listening. Um, and also what that change sparked you to do today. So a few moments later better than me i'm gonna be asking the questions but you know i'll let him explain himself you know to to, to you all so before we get started coach lee hopkins can you say hello and what's up to everybody hello what's up how you doing everybody marquise thank you so much for having me here i appreciate it i'm glad to be um here at your podcast and have a conversation with you and i definitely appreciate you allowing me to speak for myself i mean Love yeah. that. I tell, I tell my own story. <laughs> I tell people I am. <laughs> that's all. What's what we're all about. Yeah, well, so, so welcome. Thank you. Uh, so I'm a coach who helps people make friendships, lasting friendships. And I started out on this journey helping people because I had problems making my own friendships and being lonely and being stuck myself. So I'm basically going to share with you my journey, what I've been through and how I got here today. Of course. Okay, that sounds good. So before we get to the depths of your life, where did it all start? Where did it all start? Just let's go. Let's go to the to the to the sea. Where did it, where, where did it go? Where where did this journey start? Where where where's the starting point for you? Where did this journey start for me? Well, it mm-hmm. started when uh, I was a small kid in this little town in Ohio. Okay. So that was it. That was where I felt really lonely. Mm-hmm. I felt disconnected. I just feel like I couldn't be myself around people. And that's just been the, the theme for my entire life. You know, I grew up in that town. Mm-hmm. And when I left the town, I had an opportunity to go to college and I was able to have new experiences. I thought all I needed to do was find the right people. You know, you keep hearing that. Find your tribe, find your tribe. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I left my hometown, started looking in college. I remember seeing somebody with blue hair and I was like, wow, I was just amazed. You know, I was <laughs> just I was amazed around the people the the student unions, all kinds of stuff like that. And I thought there's plenty of opportunity for me to connect with people here, but I didn't, I couldn't, I don't know what it was, didn't mm-hmm. know what it was then, but I still felt very lonely. still felt lonely. And so after I graduated from college, I realized that, well, it was the entire state of Ohio that was messed up. The entire state had to go leave that behind. And I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had an opportunity to move to California where I could reinvent myself. Mm. I could reinvent myself there. And it was, I, I did that. I did that. Honestly, I met some new people and I started doing karaoke. So oh, okay. Karaoke. I love, I love the karaoke a little bit. <laughs> so I did the karaoke and I even organized a kind of karaoke club where people would, people knew me. Like I was mm-hmm. a mini celebrity. I walked to the bars and people would have my drinks ready. They'd be high-fiving me and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I was feeling like a, a little celebrity here. I'm like, yeah, I found my tribe. You'd think. You'd think. But then, of course, you know, it didn't work out. I, as much effort and and work as I put into it, as many people knew me, I still didn't feel like I could talk to those people. I didn't feel like I could be connected. I couldn't be authentic and open and real. Mm -hmm. They looked like my tribe on the outside, Mm -hmm. but they didn't really feel like my tribe on the inside, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think a lot of people go through that. They go and look and they, they have that experience. And I'm like, hmm, all right, well, I had this pattern where I think I have to leave and go find something else. So, of course, I left the entire state of California, thought that was wrong. Just <laughs> the, the whole state didn't have what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. I left and I moved to Chicago where I am now. So I had an opportunity to move to Chicago. And here, 
is where I made this transformation. This is what this is what I thought was going to be the biggest, you know, third time's a charm. It's going to be the thing that changed my life forever. And so what I hadn't told you at the beginning of this is that I'm a trans man. Mm-hmm. So when I was in Ohio and in California, I was presenting as a female woman. And when I went to Chicago, I thought that that was the big thing that I was hiding or the secret or the thing that I wasn't able to open with. And certainly I've been carrying that with me. So I thought, well, when I hit the ground in Chicago, I met the right people. And this was about the time where Caitlyn Jenner was coming out. Mm-hmm. I met the right people. I got the right language. I got the support that I needed to mm-hmm. make this transition to a trans man. Mm-hmm. And I thought right then and there, Marquise, that my life was going to be different. I'm going to find my people. This is my tribe, the trans community. It's everything to me. Right. And well, I mean, I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. I know. you're. It's, yeah. It's wrong. And I think that we all have some experiences like that. Now, just because you out there and you, Marquise, you're not trans doesn't mean that we don't understand what it means to be lonely. We don't understand what it is. And far too often, I think we're waiting for an experience mm-hmm. or a place or or an event or something to happen mm-hmm. that make us acceptable that make us uh, fit to be in a tribe that, and it, it's just not that. And that's mm. what I, you know, I want to talk a little more about that. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's amazing. First of all. And uh, I like how you're able to open the reflect on, you know, your shortcomings and things. And you're right. Loneliness has no gender. Loneliness has no color. Loneliness mm-hmm. has no height, weight, uh, social security number, loneliness, you know, loneliness, <laughs> loneliness is bad. we've all, even when we have people in our corner, you know, or mm-hmm. in, in our corner, and you still feel lonely inside, that's, that's a different type of loneliness when you feel lonely inside. And yeah, I didn't know you were in Chicago. You're not from Chicago, right? I'm from Chicago. I, was, I didn't know you from Chicago. Yeah, I was born in, born in Chicago and 53rd in Peoria. Yes, I was. So you know that I made the right decision by living here. No? Said, yeah, you, you did. You did. You did. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a big city. City life. I'm. I'm. You know. It's, it is what it is. I. I've been around the world so much now that I get shocked every time about Chicago because like it's a busy, big city. You know, it's traffic and you know, Dan, yeah. the Dan Ryan and all that stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, definitely. It's definitely the biggest city I lived in. And yeah, I, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty. It's pretty big. But Chicago is beautiful when it's beautiful. You know. Um, but mm-hmm. back to back, back to the subject though. But yeah, uh, I really appreciate um, you being able to you no know, be open about uh, being lonely. I think a lot of us in society today now nowadays we have a lot bottled up um, mm-hmm. feelings, um, viewpoints, anything like that. We have a lot bottled up, and that's one of the reasons I was telling you in our grooming session why I podcast because I know a lot of people have a lot bottled up and. They are yeah. not. They don't have the courage to sometimes express those things, right? So, thank you for having the courage to express those things, and let's 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 dig let's dig a little bit deeper into it. So, we were talking about you know loneliness and things like that. What do you what what do you mean? How does it feel for you when you say you were, like it was a lonely feeling, or when you were around people, your tribe, and you still didn't feel it? Like, how did it, explain how that experience made you personally feel? Like, yeah. Well, that feeling was just terrible. Uh, that's mm-hmm. the best that's the best word that's, I've got for big. it. I'm sure there's a t- <laughs> <laughs> of course, other words you can use, but yeah, terrible, terrible is hitting on the head, huh? <laughs> terrible. I, you know what? Yeah, there's probably more words that I can use. And people can relate to this feeling of feeling unloved, feeling unimportant, feeling unseen, feeling mm-hmm. uncared for. All of those things is what happened. And there are people around me that you said, like you said, there are people around me that, that were in my corner, but... For some reason, I didn't feel it, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And I think the reason why I didn't feel it, that people don't feel it, is because they're not really being open and authentic. And man, I've heard that so many times. I could roll my eyes at it. Oh, being authentic. What the flip does that mean? What does that mean, being mm-hmm. authentic? Mm-hmm. And how do you get there? Like, I thought I was being authentic by talking to people, by showing up, and by doing this, and by doing karaoke, by saying things that were on my mind. Mm -hmm. I thought that was authenticity. Mm -hmm. That really isn't what it's meant. That's not what it's meant. And so what I discovered is that um, I had a fear, like you said, of sharing something deep down inside. And I say something because I didn't really know what that something was. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what it was. I think we have a 
I had a problem figuring out what that thing was to share. Cause I thought it was, you know, just sharing my opinions and my, my thoughts, mm-hmm. my ideas, mm-hmm. but there's so much more to it than that. It's, it's your history. It's sharing a bit of your history. It's sharing a bit of your hobbies. Mm-hmm. It's sharing a bit of your, your things that make you happy or make you sad. Things that invoke some kind of emotional, um, emotional response in you. It's mm-hmm. sharing those things openly, being prepared for the rejection that might come. Mm-hmm. So openly, I'm talking about like, I used to play uh, Dance Dance Revolution back okay. in the day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're familiar with that game, it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of really a goofy game, but I loved it so much. I was so into it. And every time I opened my mouth about it, every time I said something about it, I was so passionate about it, people would be like, Ugh, that's so stupid. I can't believe you look at these arrows and play this game. And I would spend money on it. I would. Mm-hmm. I was at this level where I would start counting money as Dance Dance Revolution <laughs> sets or games. So instead of instead of saying like um, I can spend a, a dollar on a Junior Bacon Cheeseburger or something, I mm-hmm. would say that's one DDR set for a Junior Bacon <laughs> Cheeseburger or something. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. So it was it was an obsession. The, the, the point is is that I was very very passionate about it. And every time I sold some, told someone about it, it seemed like they would just reject me. And so I would close myself up. And that's what I mean about being authentic mm-hmm. is sharing these things that are important to you, regardless of how other people are going to react to it. And getting to that stuff is hard. It's mm-hmm. uncomfortable. It doesn't mm-hmm. feel good, mm-hmm. especially if you've grown up where somebody's always downplaying or, or negging what, you've, what you do. Like, mm-hmm. ah, that ain't good. I got something bad to say about everything. Mm-hmm. You know, aunties or whatever. They're like, yeah, you mm-hmm. could do better. Or I wish you could do this or that. You know, that stuff gets into your unconscious and yeah. it just rolls with you and you just slowly shut down. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, um, you know, I don't make it about racial, but the black community, you know, we have a lot of uh, a lot of things that I feel like we say. And we don't realize how subconsciously they plant seeds, especially when you're younger and you're, you're soaking everything in. And I come from the same, you know, the same cloth and things like that. Um, I know as, as, a, as a people, we have a lot of growth to do, but we say a lot of things and we don't think, take into account what those things can cultivate to later on in your life. You know, because like, as you said, subconsciously, right, mm-hmm. like you may shrug it off or ignore it or say, oh, that's stupid or whatever. But subconsciously, it still holds with you. Right. Just like right. um, I had a, I have a, I have another sh- uh, 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 alternate show, right? And uh, me and my co-host were talking about. She said her father's never said he loved her, and she's like forty something now, and she still like wants him to say. She said even when she's on the phone, I'm now he's older. She's older. She still like wow. say, I, she still says I love you, mm-hmm. and he doesn't say it, say it back. But I'm a kid. She never got that, and she still wants it as an adult. You know, that's kind of that's, that's crazy, right? We shouldn't normalize yeah. things like that, right? Yeah, that that is really because mm-hmm. I mean I I think that's a great example of what the the thing about making connections and being loneliness and that's a lonely feeling like even though her dad's probably doing a bunch of stuff to show that he loves her talking to her and he's still in her life and things like that she doesn't kind of feel that same intensity of love mm-hmm. and and what I've discovered is that it's the demonstration that you understand is what helps us make the connection so he might love her to the ends of the earth Mm -hmm. but he has not demonstrated it to her in a way that she understands and believes Mm -hmm. and that's what makes our connection Mm -hmm. that's what makes the connection and so I help people understand what that is within them and how to make sure, look for that aha moment. Like teachers, I think they're taught to look for the, the eyes popping open moment, the aha, I get it, I understand. Mm-hmm. You can do that with other people. As long as you're willing to be open and vulnerable, understand yourself, you can do that, make that connection with other people. Mm-hmm. And to your point about the black community, yeah, I think that we have come from uh, a time where, I mean, we were probably in our best best time anytime i guess in the future for people of color is probably better than the past right Mm -hmm. so i think that we have an opportunity to actually sit with our feelings and learn what they are 
and be able to express that. I know that my parents' generation, my parents, their parents' generation had zero opportunity to do this. Mm-hmm. They were just like, it's grind, it's working. There's all kinds of stuff, going, political stuff going on. I need to make sure these kids eat. Mm-hmm. I need to deal with my own mm-hmm. my own feelings about myself mm-hmm. and my situation and deal with these kids and deal with the, the partner or husband or whatever that's going on and deal with society. Mm-hmm. It's so much to be able to focus. Now we get an opportunity to really talk like, like this podcast right here. We have an opportunity mm-hmm. to talk about these feelings. I, I agree. Um, that's a way a way to be optimistic about the future. First off, because you know some people, you know, some some people are like, oh, you know, it, it, you can always point the negative out about things, but it's not only identifying. Yeah. The, it's not even identifying a problem, but you know, uh, the one thing they do tell in the military, which I'm not gonna make make a lot of military references here, but they do say if you if if you bitch about something and you and you you come with a problem, come with a solution. Yes, come with a solution. It, because other than that, you're just griping. You're not making anything better. So uh, I think that's going to be a testament to a little bit of our conversation as well. Exactly. So, Coach Hopkins, what is friendship to you? What, are, what, Based on your experiences, what do you see friendship as now in your life? Oh, yeah. Friendship is definitely... Oh, man. I've been through so many relationships and so many friendships. They all just folded. I mean, mm-hmm. for real. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> friendship is about being able to be open and authentic again being authentic is sharing these things or these hobbies history whatever it is about you that is emotionally it it, it moves you emotionally Mm -hmm. whether it's being angry whether it's being sad whether it's being happy and bringing joy sharing those things with someone who demonstrates they understand you Mm. so that's what i say friendship and connection is now it's easy to say that when we, we gravitate, when I think about friendship and in and helping my clients, it's really easy to try and gravitate to someone who looks like us because mm-hmm. we kind of assume that we have the same shared experience. The idea of understanding, demonstrating that they understand is gone. We don't have to do that because mm-hmm. you as a black man, you would look at me as a black man mm-hmm. and you'd be like, yeah, this guy's probably had corn cornbread and collard greens at some point in his life Mm -hmm. and you talk about the family barbecue Mm -hmm. boom you don't have to explain anything to me Mm -hmm. i already understand right (laughs) it's like that Mm -hmm. it's work though Mm -hmm. to get down to those things that are just more than surface level Mm -hmm. right it's work so i'll tell you a funny experience about me and um being a black man so i'm trans right Mm -hmm. i didn't grow up with a father in the household single parent mother household and I go get my haircut in Chicago for the first time in a black barber shop. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. okay. Yeah, we're okay. <laughs> it's something I've never, either never experienced before. It's mm-hmm. like there's such a long wait. Everybody's just talking, 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 talking. Dude comes in with some fried chicken and some soda, and they're just talking, talking. And it's like he's in the middle of cutting my hair, and he stops to talk. And I'm like, okay, is this, well, this is what we do. Okay. And then I'm just so confused. I'm so confused. And then, you know what? This guy, I don't like how he cuts my hair, but I don't know where else to go. Mm-hmm. So I come back the next week and sure enough, that guy isn't there. So another guy cuts my hair and I love it. I mm. love it. I come back the next week. Both the dudes there, the dude that cut my hair, I didn't like. The dude that cut my hair and I did like. And they asked me which one. <laughs> Which ooh, one? Ooh. You already know. You already know. <laughs> I was like, I want the dude to cut my hair and I like it. And they're like, uh uh-uh. uh. What do you <laughs> record scratch? Everybody stop. Everybody thought that I knew the rules. So it's like once somebody cuts your hair the first time, the first person who touches your head is the only person who touches your head. Yeah, screw that rule though. I, I hate that rule. I, I, it's, it's a rule. You're right. I don't like the rule though. If you don't like the I haircut, don't. I'm tired of this shit, man. Like, <laughs> 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 like, no, if you like your haircut, you should better go back. You pay your money. I'm tired. We we are breaking these. We are breaking these habits. Break I don't like. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off. I, I feel. I feel I feel. That, I feel, that. I feel <laughs> See, you get, you get. <laughs> I felt that. I felt that. We got to stop doing that. <laughs> but do you get it? Do you mean, mm-hmm. see, I didn't understand. Like, mm-hmm. they, they assumed that I had the same experience in the mm-hmm. school and this understanding mm-hmm. of it. But man, you and I would connect a little better than them because 
they have this rule. Other people who have this rule, it's deeper. That affected me emotionally, deeply. Like, holy, mm-hmm. I don't think I should be paying my money for this. Don't you understand how I feel about that? Mm-hmm. And people are like, no, rules are rules. I don't care. I don't understand. Then it's going to be hard for us to connect. Mm-hmm. We don't have a shared value in our experiences. Mm-hmm. So that's what friendship is. Um, a little bit of shared experiences. A lot more of a shared value, though. Shared value. Shared value. Mm-hmm. So. So how much, uh, Coach Hopkins, how much does love of self and appreciation of self play into having good friendships with others? Oh, yeah, man. Self, love of self and understanding of self is everything to it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take this to this word boundaries. Uh, okay. I hear we talk about boundaries and mm-hmm. I think the first thing we think about or we've been conditioned to think about is it's how boundaries keep things out. But they also keep things in. Mm-hmm. There's a plus, there's a minus, there's an up, there's a down. So when we're looking at boundaries, when I want to talk about boundaries and making connections and friendships, it's all about understanding what you want inside of you or your space, you inside of yourself, like yourself, your your mm-hmm. connections with other people. Mm-hmm. And um, connections, real quick, there are three kinds of connections that you're going to make with people or make, period. There's me the connection with yourself mm-hmm. there's you the connection with you and one other person and there's connection with we which is like society connection societal connection so they all start with me though. they all start with anything that you want with your boundaries what you believe what your values are what your character is and if you don't know what those things are then you are not going to be able to share with other people what you want from them it's mm-hmm. going to be hard all you're going to do is um, just be whoever someone else wants you to be. Because mm-hmm. just imagine, I mean, it's much simpler to say, hey, I like biking, I like sports, I like Chicago, whatever. Mm-hmm. I say those things and those are a definitive part of me. Mm-hmm. If I go out there and I'm trying to make friends and I say, well, I, I don't like, I don't like Ohio, I don't like uh, swimming, I don't like the Olympics, Those are things that really don't give me a definition of who you are. They're Mm -hmm. just things that you don't know or don't like. Mm -hmm. They don't really define you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us go out there and we do that. It's like, well, so I don't know how I'm going to talk to you if I don't know what you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Well, we run into situations. I know I run into situations with people who aren't sure about what they want from me. And I think it's unfair of them to to ask me to help them figure that out. Well, as a coach, man, that's what I'm supposed to do. But, <laughs> <laughs> but as a friend, as a friend, you walk it around like, oh, I don't know. I, I want to, I want friends, but I don't, we can talk about any and everything. Can you be a little more specific about what you like and what you do and what's important to you? And then we can talk about those things because then I can decide whether I like to or not. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. have to guess. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> The guess part of, of human beings is probably the hardest guess you can ever make because no one ever knows what's going on inside your head, right? I mean, no yeah. one can no one can extract and know what your thoughts are. You are the only person who can express your thoughts and your feelings for the most part. And somebody can see, you know, exterior your your posture, maybe when you're sad or maybe when you're proud, you stick your chest out, or when you're upset, you kind of squint your face. But mm-hmm. you can get cues. But for you know what's going on in here, and you know, when you, it's hard, They're like it's yeah, it's extremely difficult to 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 describe or gauge where where they are. Yeah, and everybody wants to be understood. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to be understood, and everybody wants this understanding. Mm-hmm. And so you're out there, you're squinting your eyes, and you're like, "Well, people don't understand me." Well, that's because you haven't demonstrated what you're feeling to them. Mm-hmm. You haven't opened up your mouth to tell them that you're upset and why you're upset. People don't understand me. Well, of course they don't. Of course they don't. You don't. Mm-hmm. You don't understand yourself enough to be able to share that with other people. Mm-hmm. That, that's that was key. That was really key. Um, understanding the self, love of self, and it goes back to it. You have to be whole. You know, to be a, you. You can be whole to communicate, even if you, you're you're whole with you know communicating your brokenness, right? Like, you, but you're absolutely. You, 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 I'm, I'm making sense there, right? Like, yes, I know, absolutely. Like I, know, I know I have an ailment here, right? But I have to be whole enough to be able to communicate that, so, so I can get the right help to you know to be fully whole, you know, fully fixed. 
Yeah. And, you know, Marquise, I like to say that I like everybody to know that boundaries aren't just something that we we it's it's something that we accidentally find Mm -hmm. for the most part. When we're not intentionally looking for boundaries, we accidentally find it. We like we run into a situation and that invokes a strong emotion in us. And we're like, oops, you know, I don't want to do this again or I do want to do it again or Mm -hmm. I never want to see this happen again. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And so. I help facilitate that, you know, and your brokenness, you you still should be exploring who you are. I mean, we're, we're always just trying to do that. So in order to facilitate that, to help you not make it so spontaneous and random, mm-hmm. I have this three, uh, a three end from framework, it's three end framework, your needs, your negotiables, and your nevers. This is going to help you build your boundaries. Okay. These are the thing needs are specific actions. I'm talking actions that you want to see in your life. You want people to see in your life. Mm -hmm. Your negotiables are things that you can take or leave. They're they're actions that you see people do that can take or leave. And then your nevers are things that actions, specific actions. I want to stress their actions that people do or someone will do. And you never want to experience that again. You never want to have that happen Mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. It's important that you're looking out for those things. Look for that strong emotional moment. Don't let that stuff just be like, uh, eh, whatever, you know. No, you've got to really know how you feel about that. Mm-hmm. Because if it's anything like me, if you're anything like me in my relationships where, you know, just put up with it, doesn't matter. You know, I want to be mm-hmm. there. I'm mm-hmm. okay with it. I'll do whatever. And then, you know, exploding and fighting and yelling, throwing stuff. And because you just, can't take it anymore if you just said if you just honored yourself and just said hey i don't want this in my life Mm. and let it go then it'd be good then you wouldn't have to deal with that stress and letting go is harder for us a little harder for some than others uh, but it it takes a lot of courage and strength to let go something that's not healthy for you right that's something that a lot of adults yeah, a lot of adults struggle with it. We know, and kids as well. Um, you know, younger yeah, adults. Yeah, man, as well. it's it's mm. scary. It's scary. That's why, because we don't want to be lonely. Right. I don't want to be alone. I mean, I've done that. I've done that for my entire life. I've just been like holding on to things and people, and I'm so afraid that I'm float away because I'm holding on so tight. Right. And it, and I don't. It might not even. I mean, yeah. I think fear. It's the fear of being alone. That that that, that kind of drives it. You know, mm-hmm. and because we've all been at that lonely feeling before right it's that fear of i don't want to feel like that again or i don't want to you know that fear i i, I spoke i speak with a lot of people right and I, I think you this comes into full circle where how fear dictates a lot of our actions sometimes because just, just because you're afraid but the thing about fear it prohibits you from doing a lot more than trying to do things right if you're afraid to do things you you, 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 suppre- yeah. you suppress a lot of things because you're afraid right so. Yeah, exactly. And then you just end up never doing anything. And this, mm-hmm. you even have on top of that this fear of never accomplishing anything mm-hmm. just looming in the background. Right, it's just right, right. Fear is everywhere. Right, right. So these are good. These are really good life lessons to anybody. I mean, any, anybody. Mm-hmm. Anybody can take from this. And it takes having conversations like these and or talking to people like you to be able to make these conversations normal. You know, the more we hear it, the more people hopefully will practice it. Um, like my thing is this. If they listen to this episode and we get one person who is you know, who plants a seed in, I'm okay with that, right? If it's like a hundred listeners and only one says, you know what, this is my change, I'm okay with that. But that's why yeah. I put this out there. So patterns of possibility. Patterns of possibility. Let's talk about patterns of possibility. Okay. So you created patterns of possibility and you, I, I, I'm assuming well, you, you saw a problem and you were trying to find a solution to it. So patterns of possibility. Yeah. Let's go into the thought process of patterns of possibility. Well, the patterns of possibility came from just reflecting on the patterns that I've seen in my life. And okay. I've, I was like the big story that I have is from moving from Ohio to California to Chicago, moving in and thinking that moving physically was the solution finding the people was the solution Mm. and so i realized that i was doing the same thing so when i went to chicago when i made it to chicago i was there and uh i was meeting up with people in the bar scene connecting with them and shutting the bar down with them and Mm. knowing the bartenders and staying after hours and things like that i was doing 
those things that I was doing in California. It's like, oh, that's, that's a pattern that I realized. And I started to look at what I was getting from that. So what I wanted from it was making friendships and connections. And I felt like I had because I knew the people, but I didn't really remember or open up to them because I drank so much. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I drank okay. so much. So mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, this is a pattern. I need to change it. What can I change about this pattern? Mm-hmm. And I changed, I removed uh, the bar scene, but there was, so I would go to comedy clubs and I would go to mm-hmm. um, like the, there was a lot of sports leagues. Mm-hmm. So I would go to a sports league, but there's still alcohol there. So I'm right. looking for this right. commonality. So mm-hmm. let's, let's get rid of the alcohol and see where I go. And slowly doing things like that. I recognize that there's a pattern of behavior that I'm doing. I need to break that pattern some way. Just find one thing that I can switch about it and make the make the change and see what the results will be. So that's what I discovered in making my friendships with doing this experimentation in my life, discovering that, well, it's not just going to places what do I do at these places that don't have alcohol now? How do mm-hmm. I show up there? I mm-hmm. do, I'll try this and I'll try that and see what the results will be. And that's how I got to the times possibility of coaching where I discovered that it's all about how you reveal yourself. Mm-hmm. Everybody's thinking about fear and being afraid. And um, the biggest thing that I'd recommend is showing yourself revealing yourself. Everybody wants to be connected, but they're afraid to open up. Mm. So if you're that person that can open up, I became that person that can open up. And that only comes from the sense of self. What do I want to share about me and how secure I am about sharing that stuff Mm -hmm. with other people? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about oversharing and talking about the trauma that you've had in your life. Not that, Mm -hmm. because that's a different kind of bonding. I'm talking about something that feels safe and secure, and that will usually spark joy in somebody. That's what it is. So I talk about karaoke and I talk about that and you smile, you laugh because it's like, oh, it's people most of the time they're like, man, I never the, the courage to do that or that sounds like fun or whatever. You know, I'll share something like that and I'll gauge their reaction to me. Just like you smiled. If they're like, they scoff at me. Well, that's really important to me, karaoke. And I can take that attitude as a never. All right. Mm-hmm. I can take it as a never because if you can't be excited about something I'm showing you so much joy for, mm-hmm. then you're probably not going to be a person that I can connect with. Right. Right. You're probably not going to be there for me when I show you something that's really hurtful and important to me. You might mm-hmm. scoff at that too. And that's mm-hmm. going to hurt like hell. So mm-hmm. patterns of possibility is all about noting, knowing, noting those things, knowing those patterns. So it's a uh, coaching Formula coaching program. Is that what you, was that how we could people describe it? Yeah. Yeah. I have a yeah. coaching program. So I have courses that go along with it. Okay. And when I, when I ask my clients to work with me, I don't do one off sessions. I don't, for the most part I do, maybe mm-hmm. I do a couple okay. with you, but I would not be able to help you make lasting change and recognize patterns in one hour session. It's okay. just not possible. Right. It's not possible. So I can come with, I can come and have a conversation to, with you and maybe help you with a specific issue that you would have. Mm-hmm. But if you want lasting change and making deep friendships and lasting friendships, I ask for a 12 week commitment and mm-hmm. I also have courses okay. and I stay with you and I stay with you through it because I know it's not easy. Mm-hmm. I know it's not easy. It's a whole mindset shift. It's meeting the people. It, it's, it's an investment in you. So mm-hmm. I want to help people grow. So it's a coaching program of courses and a time commitment. Helping people grow. That is one of my pillars of why I did this podcast. So yeah, you fit, you fit right in the family uh, with, with the message that I want to portray, you know, or I like to portray with myself, my guests and everything like that. You know, just real accounts from real people doing you know, things because self-care, maintenance, we have to, we have to, the only way we're going to do better as a society generation is people like you, people like me, you know, helping contribute to society in a positive way for growth, right? We're not going to change everything. We're not going to be able to, you know, turn water into wine, but mm-hmm. you, you, you know, uh, yeah, these, these are contributions to the world. And I, I really applaud you on taking your experiences and cause a lot of people go through things and they just go through them and, they that's it you know they don't use their experiences as fuel to you know teach somebody or to help somebody else some people go through it and just like shut down 
They, tell, mm-hmm. they come off totally different person. They uh, they bury it. They want to ignore it. They don't want it to be a part of it. They, they don't embrace that experience. So uh, thank you a lot for just being able to embrace an experience and get an understanding from it and help others. That's huge. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I appreciate you uh, allowing me to, to come share that with you on this podcast because it is so important for us to have these conversations because it's like, I didn't know what these conversations would look like. I mean, I didn't know what a conversation to share my thoughts and feelings look like to people. I I thought I had, I mean, people ask me how I felt Mm -hmm. about stuff where people ask my opinion or or question my opinion, rather, like ask me to defend my opinion. I'm even, I didn't feel like I'm being attacked. Like I didn't, Mm -hmm. like if people just ask me how, why do I like this thing? And I feel like they're attacking me. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I don't have the right language to just say to realize that oh they just want to know more about me that's right. it right. right yeah this so normalizing this kind of conversation is remarkable that's yeah that's uh, he, he spoke about you know sometimes you know not having chemistry or network with people because so a podcast and sometimes you may meet somebody who is just so far off you know so like the, the <laughs> fact that the fact that we did click when we know uh this conversation wise and things like that is a blessing and uh, that's why i continue to do this because I, I i love the fact that that happened and you talked about karaoke and karaoke gave me a a uh, memory of korea i was in korea before and, and the koreans love karaoke yeah <laughs> they oh my god they love karaoke karaoke and soju and uh, that's why every time you say it, soju. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they like rice liquor or something yeah and it's soju yeah oh, you, you heard of it before yeah so yeah yeah so when you, whenever you spoke about karaoke i just know how fun karaoke is and that's why i smile every time you say it. like i do karaoke I, I love karaoke too you know like i, I love it so something that's a free you thing you get up there and sing you get up there and sing when i'm drunk <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you, Coach. But when, when I got some alcohol in my system, then that's when I, I turned to American Idol. We were stuttered. Like, <laughs> <laughs> as long as I can read the words on the screen, I said I'm good. Okay, I, I would just, you know, I don't know how the, the levels of my voice are. I think I might be think I'm Mariah. I don't know who I might think I'm, I am, but. Uh, I've, I've always made it home. My, my, my friends didn't ditch me when uh, my singing was that bad. So, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I sincerely thank you for you know having the time to come here, talk. I, it was a fun conversation. It was a genuine, real conversation, which I I, I appreciate. Um, as we summarize and wrap up, um, this is your opportunity. Just tell how you felt about our conversation, and also provide information for anyone who would like to. Learn more about you, find you, you know, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. I don't know. So many different ways to contact people nowadays, email, yeah. anything like that. Um, and which we will also include in the show notes, uh, everyone listening out there. Uh, Coach, everything Coach Lee is given, I will include in the show notes when this episode is released. So give Coach Lee the floor as we close. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. My no name problem. is Coach Lee. And you can find me at patterns of possibility.com slash more possibility. That's where you can find uh, my 10 tips for making memorable conversations, as well as my free course for understanding connections. And um, you can find me at Patterns of Possibility on all social media. I'm out there, some some form of social media. You've got a TikTok, YouTube, all the things that he named. <laughs> and I want to share the last, the last piece that I want to share with you is that mm-hmm. you know, everything that you're going through is, is not a unique, unique experience. You know, if you're lonely and you're feeling like you can't make friends, there's somebody else out there who's feeling the exact same way, especially now when we're in this point of self-discovery. So there are other people out there who are just waiting. They're just waiting for you to open up, waiting for you to be your authentic self. So you can do that. It's not it's not easy. It's not simple, but it's wait, it's not easy, but it's not simple. You know, it was so it was so it was it was so inspirational until I just ruined it with this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, no, it's not impossible. That's what you meant to say. It's not impossible. It's not yes. impossible. There you go. I, I got Thank you. you. I got you. I got you. Thank hey, you. <laughs> as long as you operate, from, you operate from a genuine place, that's all I care about. Who cares about it if you said it the right way or not? We know where you're coming from. You're coming from the heart, and that's all that matters. And that's why I continue to, to, yeah. to, to connect with people like this. Good personalities, good spirits. Um, that's what we need here. So thank you so much, Coach Lee. I enjoyed you. I hope you enjoyed yourself as well. Uh, I thank did. You, thank you to all the listeners out there. We appreciate you all. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Wherever you are in the world, we make these sessions happen. You know, I'm in Italy. 
He's in Chicago. Time zones got to, you know, line up and things like that. So that makes these moments even more memorable for me, you know, because people take time out of their day. I'm here at what, 11 o'clock at night, you know, on a Friday. I'm not at the club. I'm doing something, helping, you know, helping you all get a, a, a great message. So hope you all enjoy and go out and support Coach Lee however you can. If you just go out and just support, just go give a look, you know, give a look, see what what's to offer, see things, how somebody you may know can, can benefit off of this. Give a like, subscribe, subscribe share, you know, a ha ha. Even send them, send them a, t- a TikTok or something. If you're doing some karaoke, you might like that too. So, <laughs> but I would love it. I would love it. <laughs> but we thank you. We thank everybody out there listening, and we will catch you all in the next episode. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Please leave an honest review, subscribe, and share. Listen to us on all platforms. Follow us and ask questions on Twitter at Marquis Podcast Mailbag. Follow us on IG at Flavor In Your Ear Podcast. And like our Facebook page, Flavor In Your Ear Podcast. For exclusive content, info, special offers, and free entry into our monthly giveaways, send your email address to flavorinyourear247 at gmail.com to join our email list. If you're anxious, we have a snippet following our next episode's topic. Peace and love. I created Legend Speaks because uh, I have always written stories and um, poems and stuff like that. And some of the create c- characters that I came up with in those stories, I used to name Legend, right? And Legend, part of a Legend story was always based off of something that I went through in my life, in my past. And I uh, just, you know, that's how I started her story in my uh, in my short films or in my scripts. So, Legend Speak podcast is a. I started it because I wanted to tell you a story. But before I tell you this story, I want you to know that this story is being told to educate and not to create more hate. Possibly to bring awareness and to tell you a side of a story that you would have never heard. And to remind you that even if you have worked with someone for 20 years and you trust that person, that does not mean that you know them.